I'm given a right for everybody to stand up as if I'm a president. It's okay. Thank you very much. A program director, organizers of the 2023 Investing in Africa Mining in Daba, um, the two presidents will be here, not here today, and honorable ministers present here today. Deputy Minister Nobu, Dr. Nobu Shengabane and other deputy ministers present here, captains of the industries, members of the investment communities, members of uh, and leaders of organized labor, uh, civil society and communities, members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished guests, members of the media. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you to South Africa, uh, a mining destination of choice with a history of mining spanning 150 years. Uh, this country has been mining for more than 150 years. Uh, this is an industry which has over the years been the backbone of South African economy and continues to be a flywheel of our economy. Now, I'm welcoming you here, in addition to the welcome by the acting mayor of now I'm, I'm welcoming you to South Africa. Now, the year 2022 has been a difficult year for the world and Africa in particular. It is a year in which uh, international and domestic factors negatively affected mining production and mineral sales. International factors including soaring energy prices due to the ongoing geopolitical dynamics, uh, whereas domestic factors including ongoing power supply disruptions, known here as load shedding, and the logistical bottlenecks on our railways and ports. These are the issues that we are inviting ideas to help us overcome. So we're not giving you problems, we're giving, uh, throwing uh, what our vulnerabilities are and invite your ideas to help us overcome these problems. The soaring global energy prices negatively impacted on industry operational costs. For instance, the price of crude oil averaged $100 per, per barrel in 2022, and as a result, mining companies had to pay exorbitant prices for fuel and electricity. Now, when that happens, uh, we blame one another who is responsible for this. The reality of the matter is that geopolitics impact on all of us. Whether the conflict is in Ukraine, the impact is here. South Africa experienced more power supply disruption in 2022. This led to the decline in mining production across commodities. It is estimated that load shedding costed the economy about one billion a day. 1 billion rand a day. In November 2022, mining production conducted by about 9%, making it a serious negative impact in the production of mining. But as I said, that decline is, man is, is manifesting itself in many ways. You find mines producing and keep stockpiles because that those stockpiles can be moved to the port. And those are the issues that we must confront and we must challenge. And investors, as they come here, must appreciate that with these challenges and want to overcome them. However, if you look into a company that took an initiative early enough called Goldfields, a mining company operating in South Africa increases production by 10% opposite direction. It is our considered view that Goldfield's performance was in part because of the reforms in embedded generation. Goldfields was the first mining company to come to us and say, we want a license to develop our own solar generators, and we allowed them. And that is now paying off. They grew when the industry overall was declining. So if we take initiative, if investors put investment in the right areas, we can actually defy negativity. 
Now, the and then and the advantage uh, of amending Schedule Two of electricity where in licensing requirements for generating project for all news was increased first to 100 and ultimately removed the cap. Today, uh, embedded generation in South Africa is totally deregulated. That should be attractive to investors because you come here, you want to have your own generation, you don't need a license. You just need to register that I'm having this project so that at least we know where the project is. Uh, this, cushioning, this cushioned them from impact of load trading as they were able to generate their own energy up to 50 megawatts and thus increase and maintain the production. So I'm citing gold as an example of innovation and uh, foresight that led to different outcomes compared to the rest. The mining industry relies heavily on efficient railways and ports for their export logistics. Therefore, logistical bottlenecks on railways and ports continue to contribute to the decline of export volume and bulk commodities such as coal, iron ore, manganese and chrome. As a result, the country is not fully benefiting from the commodity boom of these minerals. Now, it is therefore urgent for the country to normalize freight operations and transnet is seized with the effort to actually accelerate improvement of the rail network to support the return to service of locomotives to enable the export of bulk commodities. We further welcome the establishment of a joint structure by Transnet and the Mineral Council South Africa because mining has taken it that we can't be spectators when we're impacted negatively by the problems in the logistics. They are partnering with Transnet, and I hope that we'll see result out of that. Uh, let's look at the, at the resolving of the energy challenges. At the side of our current energy challenges is a decline in energy availability factor from estimated 75% to about 49%. And therefore, the most feasible and logical option to exercise to resolve load shedding is by arresting the decline in the energy availability factor. People have thrown ideas at us, uh, released more renewables and so forth, and I always explain to them that it's, it's a good idea for sustainability in the long term, but if you approve a project for renewable energy today, it will not stop a, a, a load trading over the weekend. You are, have a lead time to build the facility, and therefore it takes its own time to contribute to reduction of load shedding. But what is important at this point in time is to pay our attention to the uh, decline in the electricity availability factor and failure to attend uh, to and address the declining energy plant performance and subsequent higher stages of load shedding is an irritation to society and is the potential of putting society against government. So, these are the two possibilities. One, it impacts on production, and it also impacts on the mood in the country. That's why, as a Department of Mineral Resources and Energy, we've put four points that we think need att attention if we are going to overcome load shedding within the next 12 months. The first one is improving electricity availability factor uh, through a focus-funded plan maintenance and existing power stations. Procurement of emergency and short-term power from existing facilities and other private power plants and purchase additional electricity from neighboring countries which can be unblocked in the short-medium term. If neighboring countries offer surplus energy, we must access it. And lastly, is to improve the skills capacity at ESCOM. This proposal has been put forward to for resolving load trading in the next 12 months and this will give us space to work on long-term energy security for the country. So that is our proposal and we're hoping that when you come and invest us, you're going to assist us implement these measures and improve the availability of energy. Uh, let me go to exploration. Mining starts with exploration.
because exploration is about finding the quality and quantity of minerals in whatever area. South Africa has renewed uh, its uh, frontier status as exploration destination. Our country's exploration landscape is increasingly becoming more fertile for discovery of well cast deposits of minerals of the future, such as lithium, we have discovered lithium, rare earth minerals, we have discovered rare earth minerals, copper, nickel as well, expansion of mineral systems of the, manga of the manganese fields of high grade quality. So those are opportunities for investment. You come to South Africa, you will find those minerals. So we're inviting investors to come and invest. And this mineral provides a solid base for industries of the future as well as the balanced energy security sought by the country, the region, and the world. This is a direct result of our deliberate investment in geomapping through the Council for Geoscience, whose coverage of onshore mapping has systematically expanded to 11.6% from below 5% when the program started a handful of years ago. This information is available in the geoscience portal launched in 2022 uh, mining in Daba. So please access that so that we'll know exactly where what mineral is located at. And I can add that we have given uh, geoscience a right to drill as well. And when we're discussing this, people ask us, why do you allow a geoscience council to drill? We said drill so that when an investor comes, you can say to the investor, we have this mineral, this is the quality, this is the quantity is in area X and take the investor to area with definite knowledge of what is available, what can you access, and, and that's it. In our pursuit for junior, to, to, a pursuit to unleash junior mining and emergence of new mines in South Africa, we have partners with Industrial De uh, De Development Corporation to create a 500 million uh, rand exploration fund. That is targeting emerging companies because if we grow the emerging sector and the junior mining, we know that it will add a lot of value to mining. And therefore, junior miners across the world, you are invited to come and invest in South Africa. Uh, the fund will be supported by ge uh, geological information to de-risk the exploration activity and increase the chances of success. The initial phase of the implementation of this fund is deliberately kept small to prove the value of geological information to accelerate the investment along the exploration value chain trajectory and to prove visibility stage. As part of our regional and international economic policy, a predisposition we recognize partnerships in geoscience as one of our key efficient instruments to this effect. In this regard, we have not only assigned CGS as a permanent secretariat of the Organization of African Geological Surveys, but have enabled the cooperation of this institution with our, our counterparts in the continent and in the Middle East and the world. To date, CGS has active Im and emerging partnerships in South Sudan, in Senegal, in the Ivory Coast, in Niger, in Central African Republic, in Nigeria, and Saudi Arabia. So, we are not doing it for fun. We are doing it because we, we know that integrated economic activities in the continent and in South-South are very important. The veil of geoscience as a pathfinder for development broadly and exploration cannot be overstated. I implore the investment community to invest in initiative led by CGS and OGS to secure development programs that can also secure their long-term term, health and safety. We are believing in South Africa that a safe mining industry is a productive industry uh, because if the industry is dangerous, it can't be productive. So we pay a lot of attention uh, uh, to, to the southern mining industry in 2022 recorded the lowest uh, number of fatalities uh, recorded in the history of mining. We recorded 49 fatalities for the year as an industry 
And our aim is to achieve zero harm in the industry. That is our objective. And if it's, the mining is safe, the mining is going to be productive, and the investment is going to be protected. And that is a significant improvement from last year because the last record was 51, which was recorded in 2019. We slipped back in 2020 and 2021. We have improved in 2022 to record the lowest number of fatalities in the sector. Now, uh, this is a milestone, not a target. That must be acknowledged and communicated by the industry as part of achievement to change the reputation and image of the industry in the public eye. We are emphasizing that the mining industry, one of the things that it must do better is to communicate its achievements to the public so that society must know that it's not a sleeping industry, it's an industry that is actually on the move. If we don't communicate what we do as a sector, everybody will have a negative picture of mining. But if we communicate our achievements, people will know the mining. It is also important to note that there's been no mine disaster recorded in the past three years. A mine disaster in our definition in South Africa, I don't know in other countries, is any accident that actually have fatalities of more of five and above. If one accident costs us five lives, that is a disaster. So we have not recorded a disaster in the last three years, and this is a result of concerted effort of partnership. Uh, everybody fights, unions and employers fight, government is seen as too strict a regulator. But in the area of mine health and safety, we don't have any enemy where all partners work together to improve the safety of the industry. Now, I trust that this investing in Africa mining in Daba will continue to inspire investors to continue investing in African mining and South African mining in particular. As you go to the continent, uh, don't forget South Africa. Yeah. Now, cooperation among African countries is important in building the sunrise industry and the Africa we want. If the under mining industry is doing well, we'll build the Africa we want. But one of the things that we must invest in is to change the pit to port approach for the mining industry. Don't just dig a pit, take the bulk mineral to the port and you export to somebody else. Value must be added in Africa. Let me conclude by congratulating organizers of the mining in Daba for successful organizing this important 2023 investing in Africa mining in Daba. An important event in the history of mining in Africa. We look forward to fruitful discussion which must ultimately lead to tangible investment in both historic and, min and, and minerals of the future. I'm making this point because I'm sitting there next to my colleague from Saudi. They have started a, mine, a future mining forum which aim is to link Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia. So what we do here can connect in what they are doing, and we have a responsibility to talk to one another, to actually have a bigger impact in society. Thank you very much.